What's up guys, Team and John here uh, with another Game Pickups uh, video. I've collected a few more uh, titles here and uh, also to announce the new equipment. You may notice that I sound a little bit different. That's because I'm not using the microphone that's on board uh, with my webcam anymore. Uh, we have actually invested now in a snowball microphone, a uh, blue snowball microphone for uh, about a hundred bucks. And this is my first test with it to see if it uh, works well for, you know, vlogging and all that. Uh, will be used in future uh, videos as well as I'm going to be hopefully using it as sort of an impromptu boom mic. I know the guys at Retro Liberty, until they got their new DSLR with a microphone extension, were using a snowball mic for their uh, show-off videos at the end and syncing that in with their uh, camera because I'm kind of tired of using the onboard microphone on my camcorder because uh, the microphone on any onboard device is not good because you're you're gonna hear echoes like you know sound balances all over the place and I'm getting you know kind of tired of doing that I kind of want to up the production quality a little bit until I can get my own DSLR we're looking at different options right now uh, so yeah, let me get into uh, the latest pickups. Most of these were from thrift stores here and locally in uh, Moncton, and a big haul of it was from uh, a trip from Amherst. Uh, if you guys have watched some of my previous game pickup videos, you know that there is a gaming store out in Amherst, Nova Scotia that gives phenomenal prices. I can't say enough good things about this store. Uh, if you're looking for a particular title, chances are they've got it because... Uh, when you live in a small town and you're the only game shop in town, you kind of corner the market and you get some of the best stuff. But thankfully, this guy, uh, or these guys that own this store, do not price gouge. They do not, um, they do not go buy it now eBay prices. They do pricecharting.com, they will admit to that, and they do uh, charge a fair amount for their prices. I mean, I've seen a, uh, a, con a contrast to another shop I went to where this store had a copy of Super Mario Brothers Duck Hunt and World Class Track Meet, the three in one pack that you would get with certain uh, NES uh, control decks. Three dollars he only wanted for this, and another place wanted fifteen. You know, that's the type of uh, deals that you can get from this guy, so I'm really thankful for that. Uh, well, let's get into it. Enough dilly dallying. Uh, I finally procured myself a copy of Killer Instinct Gold. I now own every single uh, Killer Instinct uh, game. I own it on the Super Nintendo, I own it on the Game Boy, and now I own uh, KI Gold on uh, the Nintendo 64, which I've never ever played before. I actually ran a few matches here, it runs very smooth. Uh, I was never ever good at ki uh, Killer Instinct, I can never pull off anything beyond like a master combo, but you know, that's not what it's about, it's about having fun, and I have fun with this. Uh, now this one I've been looking for for quite a while. A little bit of label damage. There's a sticker on it, which I don't know if I can get off or not. But for ten bucks, I couldn't beat it. It's Mischief Makers on the uh, Nintendo 64. Uh, passed the up on this one because of the fact that it, at that time I had the mentality of, oh, come on, this is a 3D console. Everything's got to be 3D. And then I played Symphony of the Night, and I'm like, oh, you can do 2D, I guess. So I picked this one up. Uh, played quite a bit of it, and. Uh, I haven't gotten to the harder stages, so I've heard this is actually a pretty hard game, but, uh, yeah, uh, I really, I, I'm really having a good time with this. I'm gonna, you know, actually sit down sometime and, uh, invest some, uh, more time in this game. Uh, there's some, like, label damage on the back there, so I think that's why it was only ten bucks, but then again, like I said, this guy's prices are very, very fair. Uh, for me, living in Moncton, it's about a half hour, 45 minute drive outside of town. It is well worth the gas money to go down to this place. Uh, so let's go with, uh, the other games that I got. Um, actually, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll lump all these together. These weren't all bought from the same shop. They were, you know, spread out all over the place. Uh, I actually got a copy of Conquer Pocket Tales on the Game Boy Color. Um, uh, made by Rare before Conquer's Bad Fur Day, and I think a little bit after Donkey Kong, or Diddy Kong Racing, I should say. Uh, there, it's, I just plugged in, tested it out, didn't play it too much. I know it's a top-down isometric, uh, platformer adventure type game. But, uh, I got that for five bucks, not bad. Uh, 
You know, I got this from my one of my uh, local pawn shops. Uh, so we bought another hard drive for the uh, Xbox 360. My uh, girlfriend Melanie wanted one for herself. She's walked by camera here. Uh, just for like her own game saves and things like that. So we got that. And I ended up picking this with the spare money that we had left over. Kirby's Pinball Land. I know uh, Doug Hancock, aka Test Zero, would love this one. No, he didn't really care for uh, Kirby's Pinball Land when he did his uh, retrospective on it, but I like it. I like pinball games. Uh, next up, I got this at the... Now, the, these were pretty good deals. I got these... Um, I think I just spoiled one of them by putting it in camera. Five bucks a piece from this pawn shop. Now, this is the same pawn shop that was selling the Mario Duck Hunt in World Class Track Beak for 15 bucks. I mean, I mean, this guy, I don't even think he looks at prices. I think he just goes on what he thinks things are worth. I ended up getting Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Fall of the Foot Clan for the Game Boy. This is such nostalgia for me. I remember having this game. Actually, my friend had this game, and I vicariously had it through him. I borrowed this from him all the time. Uh, Side-scrolling uh, Turtles game. Very, very simple. Very simplistic. And uh, I'm just showing Melanie off camera. She's trying to bring the light in, but I don't actually need it, so that's fine. Um, now this, this was probably the fine of the day. I mean, I got some other great games, but this was probably the fine of the day at this pawn shop. I got a copy of Pokemon Red, Fire Red, on GBA, $5. Now lately, people in my area have been hoarding these things. There's a guy who posted an ad on Kijiji who had three or four versions of each game so he had fire red leaf green ruby sapphire and emerald and he wanted 20 bucks a pop for them i mean these aren't rare games these, these are popular these are popular games by yeah but you don't come on stop hoarding around here i'm gonna get into that later uh this i picked up at my uh, local pawn shop which uh i love these guys because they don't price gouge they don't check ebay for prices they don't do any of that uh, they just put it on the top because uh, they're retro. And I get myself a copy of Pilot Wings, the original Pilot Wings on Super Nintendo. And you can see right there. That's how much I paid for it. Five ninety five. Uh, and funny story there. Uh, one of the girls that worked there actually was bringing in a 2DS that she purchased and couldn't afford. Um, I guess she bought it before rent time. So she sold that and I missed out. I got there too late. She sold a copy of Mario Party and Mario Party 3 on the Nintendo 64. And I already own 3, but I don't own 1. I really wanted it. So I kind of, uh, when I see people that sell retro stuff, I kind of hang back and let them do their business. Because um, I don't want to be that guy when the clerk offers them, you know, piss poor money for it and I'll swoop in and say, hey, he's offering you 5 for that? I'll give you 10 right here. You know, I don't want to be that asshole because, you know, these guys got to pay their bills and all that. So I'll, bu I'll happily buy from them. I mean, that's how I obtained my Donkey Kong Country, my Donkey Kong Country 2, and my Super Metroid for $10 a piece as I waited for the family to get the cash. And I just stood there and I looked at the guy and I said, once you're done the transaction, I want these games. Uh, not the case because this guy took the games, put them in a plastic bag, snapped, uh, snapped them up, and uh, put them aside. And I was just like, mm, you bought them from yourself, didn't you? Ah. Uh, now, I put this on Twitter, and someone was like, oh, how much did they pay you to uh, take that game off their hands? I was like, oh, I paid it willingly. Yeah, you know, it's a, you know, one person on the internet says this game's bad, and it is a bad game, but come on, you, when you collect, you collect everything, right? I got a copy of uh, Back to the Future 2 and 3 on the NES, the lone NES uh, pickup from the last few days. Uh the NES is getting harder to collect by, and I will tell you why in just a moment. So yeah, um, actually this one I did not clean and test out because uh, I have other consoles plugged in right now and I didn't feel like doing it. Uh, this next one actually is not mine, it's Melanie's. Uh, I picked it up for her though because she has a copy of this and it's missing the booklet and the disc itself is I think a little trash because of the place either the place we bought it or the place it previously owned it which I think was a blockbuster rental so actually for three bucks I got her um, a nice new cop well fairly new copy of uh, Tomb Raider Last Revelation on PlayStation and uh, yep yeah, manuals in there the disc is nice and clean and the jewel case is nice too so uh, 
Yep, she'll be replacing that. Oh, she's going to bring me the one that we bought from same there. Price. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same price. Uh, actually, the disc on that was not that bad. But it doesn't have the booklet, and the jewel case is a little bit snatched up. But oh, it's scratched up. Yeah. Oh, we got we got an extra copy now. So Oh, she has an extra copy now. Not until I give you what I owe you back. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Alright, next, uh, the Lone GameCube game. Uh, I got this at the Gaming Edge. That's the name of the store, I didn't say it before, uh, in Amherst. I got a copy of uh, Mario Golf Toadstool Tour on the GameCube. I always love the Mario Golf series, uh, especially the Nintendo 64. And uh, quite excited to put this in. I've never actually played this version before, so uh, I'm going to give that a shot. And I think... Oh, we got, uh, actually, I, I, I lucked out on this one because I don't see these too often. Uh, I got my copy of Revolution X, Music is the Weapon, starring Aerosmith. Uh, this was uh, six bucks, and, like, I, I got this too because you don't normally see the long box uh, PlayStation cases. This is before they went jewel case. So, like, they open up like that, and, oh, what the hell is that? Oh, I think it's, yeah, oh, this is the manual, and this was the crap, you kids out there who didn't grow up with uh, Blockbuster, this is the crap they used to put in the cases, it was just like, they typed out their own version of the instruction manual, and they put these, these stupid sleeves inside, I think actually this might have been from the case, they might have made their own case for it, yeah, so that snapped off, yeah, I think this is from the instruction manual. Yeah, so, yeah, the sticker's still on there, and we got this, I have no idea what they, this sponge is here for, but, yeah, long box, long box, you don't see these too often, because they usually like the first run of PlayStation games before they started putting them in jewel cases, so, that's that. Uh, the last two games we got here, uh, PS2 games, I got them because they're really cheap, and my, I actually look, I actually thought my PS2 collection was a little bit bigger than it was, and it turns out that, uh, I really should start collecting more of those, because uh, they're pretty. It's pretty light. And I got me a copy of uh, Ani for PlayStation Two. Uh, and Melanie was a little surprised that I told her that this was published by Rockstar, and oh, developed by Bungie. Pre Halo, this is this pre this predates Halo. I think yeah, this this one came out first. And then they came out with uh, Halo afterwards on the Xbox. And finally, uh, man, this case is really, really warped. Like, look at that. Like, it barely can keep the, the disc in. But there's a person on Kijiji that was actually selling a copy of Half-Life 1 on PlayStation. And funny thing with this one, this actually has a, a co-op game on it, which uh, I'm looking uh, forward to trying. Oh, actually, this one was developed by Gearbox and Valve, so really look forward to trying that one out. All right, so that's it for pickups. So when I give an update um, as to what's going on with the channel, uh, Couples Play will be taking a break. I know you, nobody, nobody's really watching those videos, so as far as Let's Plays go, Melanie and I are going to kind of cut back on those. I'm going to get back to the main Achievement Horse series soon. Um... But I am currently working on a SmackDown, WWF SmackDown retrospective. I'm actually going to be doing mini reviews and mini thoughts and feelings on the SmackDown series as a whole, uh, which will be debuting after the release of WWE 2K14. Because what's going to be happening is if you are subscribed to Test Zero's uh, channel, who's been doing uh, the Kirby Retrospective. These are just going to be short mini-reviews of the game um, and it's kind of the evolution of this series because out of all the wrestling series that have been out there, uh, published by THQ, developed by other people, this is the one series that has stood the test of time. I mean, we're at, what, like 14, 15, 16 different iterations now of this game and then all the side games that they produced. So, I wanted to give my thoughts and feelings on the series as a whole, and then coming up we're going to be doing a full Achievement Horror video on WWE 2K14. Uh, and as well, there's going to be an announcement regarding the Achievement Horror series uh, sometime next week, uh, once I get 
the use of this microphone down uh, because this one's got like uh, I don't know if you can see it on the back here uh, but it's got like a little switch on the back here where you can change like different settings depending on like you know where you where you're situated and how it like encompasses everything so it's gonna be a little bit of a learning curve with this microphone as well as like syncing up with my actual uh, camcorder so once I get that down the announcement video will be coming soon to let you guys know what's going on also uh, yeah, so the, 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 the SmackDown series, we're going to take a break from uh, Let's Plays for a while. Um, and I think uh, 2K14 will be kind of the trend for return. And you'll see what I mean coming up next week. Uh, I want to leave you now with uh, a video I was watching today. It kind of encompasses my feelings now on the whole retro collecting scene and how it's getting pretty ridiculous. Uh, Billy of the Game Chasers put out a vlog right now where he was talking about resellers uh, and his stance on them. Because uh, not all resellers are bad. I mean, I've been praising the guys at the Gaming Edge uh, with their fair pricing. I mean, they do know when a game's rare. They do know when to put a price on a, ga on a rare game. But they also know about giving value. And, uh, and uh, you know, not overcharging people on stuff. I mean... When most people would have like a box copy of Super Mario Brothers 3, they would probably charge out the ass for it. These guys only charge them 20 bucks. I mean, you get in the game. I mean, that's what most people charge just for the card itself. But lately now, uh, for you US viewers, you guys use Craigslist. Here in Canada, Craigslist doesn't really work all that well. No one really uses it. The one that's most highly praised and highly used is called Kijiji. It's pretty much the same thing. But lately I've been finding, at least here in Moncton, uh, resellers have been getting very, very bad, but some of them have actually been really good. Case in point of the good, there's a guy locally here who is selling old consoles at really good prices. Unfortunately, because I spent all the money on these games, I couldn't afford any of these. Plus, I didn't know if these older consoles, if I can get hookups for my HDTV. So I don't have a CRT TV to run the, some of these older consoles on. He was selling an Intellivision Mark II with Tron Deadly Discs for 20 bucks. That's a pretty good deal. Not only that, he was selling an Atari 2600 with a couple of uh, joysticks and 14 games. Some of them duplicates, but nonetheless, he wanted only $30 for that. That's pretty good. Then you got douchebags that think that you can sell Super Mario Brothers. Let me rephrase that. Super Mario Brothers. So this is just a standalone version. The most common NES game you can find next to Super Mario Duck Hunt that came with every action set. He wanted $50 for it. $50! It's like, how am I going to slend... $50 on a game, I might as well go buy Lego Marvel Super Heroes that just came out. That's $50. That's brand new. That's on this generation. If I really want Super Mario Brothers on a system, I'll go on the Wii Virtual Console or the Wii U Virtual Console and I'll pay $5 for that. Because that's how much that game's worth. I bought my copy at the Gaming Edge for $2. So that's what it's worth. I mean, some people are stretching it with $10, but then again, it's Mario. Some people think that they can get away with that. If they sell it, hey, good on you. No one's buying that shit for 50 bucks. And now it's up to a point where this other company, uh, what am I seeing company? I, I'm so confused. This other douchebag thinks he can sell Bugs Bunny's birthday blowout for $25. And then he says, oh, I also got The Simpsons, Bart's versus The Space Mutant for $20. This is getting retarded, people. I got my copy of Bugs Bunny's Birthday Blow Up for free at the sci-fi convention I was at last year because Buddy thought it was broken. I don't know. The only thing that was broken was like a little tiny piece of what holds the circuit board inside. It was rattling. I mean, I had my Mega Man 2 that did that. You know what I did? It? Cracked that open, put some super glue on that, boom, fixed. Rental collecting is getting out of control because... These people are seeing that there's a great community out there of people who want to collect, who want to share these experiences, and there's like a ton of young people out there that don't want to just 
go online and download every single ROM in 20 seconds and play it on their computer. No, they want to actually get the regular, the real console. They want to get the physical game in their hands, and they actually want to play it on that console. And these young people are having a hard time doing that because everything's getting inflated. All these old games are getting ridiculously priced. I remember back in the day, I used to go to yard sales, and people would sell me two NESs with all the hookups, and there would be a Mario 2 in the slot, and I got all that for a quarter. All right, lucky you'll get an NES for under $30 if it's fully functional. So I'm just saying for most people, like the people that think that you can overprice for this shit, don't expect to get rich off of this. I sure as hell do. I know the game, and I try to be fair. I've got two NESs down there that I rescued from various thrift stores to try and re uh, repair uh, and sell at a fair price. I'm not expecting, like, $50 because they don't have any hookups. I'm actually expecting, if you want this console, I've fixed it to the best of my ability. I'm offering 5 10 bucks, and then I can direct you where to get the parts for them because there are a couple of places here in town that you can get... You know, replacement controllers, AV cables, RF switches, and AC adapters, universal AC adapters that will work for a bunch of different consoles at pretty good price. So that's what I'm trying to do to help uh, stir things. I'm not going to take that extra copy of Track and Field 2 that I have and put it on Kijiji saying it's rare and charging someone $30 for it. No, that's like a $3, $4 game. Shit, I'll give that away if anyone wants the Super Nintendo I got. Anyways, that's the end of my rant. It's uh, mirroring what uh, Billy had posted up earlier today. So uh, that's all the news I got. That's my latest pickups. And you'll be seeing an announcement video from me hopefully soon when I can get uh, the use of this uh, snowball mic uh, working. And you'll see a bunch of other stuff in the channel. So again, Let's Plays will be taking a break because nobody's watching them. Uh, they were easy to produce, so we may do more in the future. Uh, but I think I'm going to hold off until maybe the audience is a little bit bigger. Because I think a lot of a lot of you guys come for my Team Minor videos. Maybe a little bit of my rants. And, uh, at le and also for my Mass Effect build. Which I'm going to unfortunately have to restart that. Uh, and I'll tell you why in a future video. So until then, you guys have a good night. And I'll see you next time.